Hello everyone and welcome to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. Today we'll be talking to actresses and how they find their purpose and passion. Leslie is no exception to this. She's done this in, in, you know, she's been doing this for many, many, many years now and still finding joy in what she does. And I'll be asking her, how does she go about in finding joy and finding her passion? And who is Leslie? Leslie's award-winning best-selling author, actress, writer, and award-winning documentary. She's the author of three best-selling books. As an actress, she's worked in films alongside Tom Hanks, Stephen Carroll, Jim Carrey, and Richard Lawson. She's honored for her work in inspiring women in 2020. And she continues to specialize in women in American pop culture. She does so much to protect the rights of women in this difficult industry. And I will be asking her, how do we go about in finding our purpose and passion in doing things we love? Meet Leslie. Hello everyone and welcome to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. I have the amazing Leslie here with all the way from where Leslie, where are you joining me from? Santa Barbara, California. Lovely. It's a definite place I've been meaning to go to, but with the whole pandemic not not happening right now. I would love to. I know, I know. I'm absolutely but glad. You'll love it when you come. Oh gosh, I can't wait. I'm absolutely glad to have you today. Um, your work as an actress, um, author, uh, you know, documentary, um, leading women. You've just got an award for that. You've done so much, but I'm not even going to go straight to that right now. I just want to understand for those who don't know you out here in the UK and the rest of the world who's going to be watching this. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Well, you know, the timing is great only because my film Behind the Burlicue finally can be streamed in the UK. Oh, well, wonderful. I know. So it's on Broadway HD. I don't know how that works there, but I'm really excited about that because I know burlesque is kind of everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Um, well, I forgot your question. What were you asking just about yes, me? My question was, who are you, Leslie? We want to know more <laughs> about you. The world wants to know, who are you? You so much. Thank you. Well, that's so funny. So I'm an actress. Um, I'm also an author. I've written three books, award-winning books bestsellers and three award-winning documentaries and it kind of happened I was doing a show I was in a one-woman show based on a character an original character but she was kind of Gypsy Rosalie and a little bit Mae West and who are kind of the definition of burlesque but I knew nothing about burlesque I mean the name just came up when I was kind of doing my research and so I thought well what is burlesque? So I started researching it just for my character, just selfish reasons. And really the only thing I could find was about the men because it was a lot about the comedians. That's how I really started the history of it. Mm -hmm. And they would say a woman like Lily Sincere, um, and they'd say her act was a bathtub act. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing about who these women were. I mean, nothing. And it just, you know, it just irritated me that they had been so famous. We don't know who they are today. We, never, we didn't even know who they were really back then. So I started researching and I happened to connect with some women who had been in burlesque in the 20s, in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s. And I remember just one day, with my husband, who's also a director, I said, I'm going to do a documentary. Never done anything before, but I was so passionate about telling their stories, which had literally never been told, um, that I did it. Me and a friend, I called her up, Sherry Hellard, who was my producer, and I said, got a camera, let's go shoot. We spent two years going all over America, finding anybody we could. And, it, and at first it was difficult because these women had never been asked about it. Mm. Um, there was still a stigma there was they were still marginalized in, in historically oh they're strippers oh they're prostitutes which is not true at all 
you know, it, it took a bit for them to warm up to me. And sometimes I had to woo them for like six months. I had to write them letters. I had to call. It's like send, I literally sent some pictures to my kids. Um, but once I interviewed a few, then they were like, oh, okay, you're okay. You're not trying to get us or make fun of us yeah. or whatever the fear was. Then it really opened the doors. And then I had just carte blanche to really find everybody to do a deep dive in these women's really interesting history. Um, it was just, and it still is, it's not known. I, I mean, you know what, still people say, oh, you did a book on burlesque. They were really, you know, prostitutes or, you know, it's just their idea is just taking off clothes. And really it was, it was an artistry to it. Yeah. What I loved most is they self-produced these acts. I mean, they were their own writers and directors and producers and costumers. And it was very empowering for them in that sense. No, that's amazing. And then just yeah, go on. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying, and from you know, that first film, then came the book, and then I kind of got into this world of American pop culture in the early 20th century. And from that I found some um Siamese twins that were freaks in the sideshow from from your country, from Brighton. Another one, I couldn't find any information. Like, who were these people? They were freaks. Uh, so that became my my second film. From that, because they were in the circus for a while, my third film, Mabel Mabel Tiger Trainer, about the world's first female tiger trainer. So everything through my, which I do all myself, has kind of brought the next thing. And they're all from that without having a plan what struck me, what I was passionate about, what I wanted to give my time to, it comes to define itself as these, these women who, who really have a voice in their day and they still don't today. And I wanted to shine a light on really their extraordinary lives. Mm. And so that's kind of, so now I'm kind of focused on that, what I'm doing to my films and my books. Honestly, I have to say, when I heard the word burlesque, I know about it because we, you know, you know about it around here and it's a big deal and it's the, it, the culture is still appreciated. But I think, no, there'll be someone who would take the initiative to do a documentary to speak to those women who did it. And in doing that documentary, what were your key findings about these women that, you know, were so brave to be out there in the twenties, thirties and really display themselves in a very artistic way? What were, what were your initial reaction in the documentary? The, it, it wasn't initial, but afterwards, after we screened it, it screened in, in Dublin. I think it premiered at the International Film Festival there. And all of it, and you know, then I started doing interviews. What struck me, which I didn't realize at the time is, and these women were all different ages, all different body types. They never disparaged their bodies ever. Back then or now, they didn't disparage other people. And some were flat chested, some were big bottoms, some were soft and squishy. Every body type, they never said anything bad about themselves. They kind of were just, I was glorious. And it was really, I mean, it wasn't ever in their conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and these women were, for the most part, not to generalize, Either they were or they became very tough, not in an unpleasant way, but in a I'm getting on with this kind of way. I spoke to one woman who's still alive. She's in her 80s, Tempest Storm, huge in the 50s. She had been gang raped when she was 14, 15. I can't really remember. And I was talking to her about it. And she's like, you know, and this isn't for everybody. This is her story. I got on with it. And I didn't let that define me, you know, and she went on to do things and, and had opportunities and traveled the world and, and made a ton of money and was super independent. Um, and it's just, most of them came from really hard circumstances, stances, mm -hmm. not a lot educated, not a lot, had any kind of money or a family life that was supportive and they had dreams they wanted to be dancers they wanted to be actors it that wasn't for them yes. only because those doors never opened for them so they took this opportunity in burlesque 
and, and really made something of their lives that they were proud of. And they knew that, that they were kind of outsiders and people looked at them a certain way. Mm -hmm. I interviewed two people in particular had never told their children. Their, their son was 48 at the year before I interviewed him that I, that I finally told him what I'd done. And it wasn't so much the shame they felt because they didn't feel it. It was what the outside world had perceived about them. Just yeah. that word burlesque, like it's so naughty. It's just naughty with a wink, <laughs> really, yeah. you know? I think that's the, I think that was it. That's what that was. That's what it is. It's just that naughty, a little bit of naughtiness and people are not quite sure how well to perceive it. But I think I'm so glad you did that too, because it shines a light, light on some beautiful women who, was, who have made history because these are things that now we look back at it and we appreciate that beauty and nature of a woman. And you went on to become an actress. You're still, you're an actress. You, do, you just don't do documentary. You're an actress as well. You starred alongside Tom Hanks. Jim Carrey, and uh, I think Richard Lawson. <laughs> yeah, I think it was last year. I how was, really? How was, how was acting alongside these some of these great actors? How was that? It's great. And, you know, I think having a variety of, which they're all the same, they're all storytelling from a different point of view. But I think being, being a director, I'm a better actor because I know I'm just a part of, of, of the director and the producer's vision of what the story is. Mm. You know, instead of it's like, oh my God, it's all about me, am I good? It's like, no, really, you're just, just a little part in it. But, I, but it's all a, a way to tell a story. Mm. Um, that's my first love, I love acting. I actually love the stage mm. so much. Um, you know, we're all kind of hampered now. I know some things are getting back to production and I've just I've seen a film with Michael Madsen which I have another day, but then I think we're in a new lockdown here, so. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yeah. But that was fun. I'm glad you, I'm glad, I can't wait to see some of these movies that you saw alongside. And uh, you, uh, one of, you know, uh, Leslie, one of the key reasons I wanted to talk to you badly was about your purpose and passion. You, your Instagram page, well, that's one of your focus, you talk about that, about finding your purpose and passion. As an actress, and especially in today's world where things are extremely difficult, um, how did you find your purpose and your passion? I know these are the things you wanted to do. You wanted to do documentary, you wanted to act and write books. I think it's, I, I really think they found me and it was somehow just, saying, I mean, I've been laughed at enough. I've been told no enough that I don't, I don't hear it. You know, I mean, nobody was born with a camera in their hand. Nobody was born as a bestseller. Nobody was born with all these things. So why can't I do these things? Mm -hmm. I absolutely, when I was uh, pitching behind the burly queue everywhere, they're like, oh, that's interesting. Well, when you're done and you spent all your money on it, you know, bring it to us. And I was like, okay, I will, because it's going to be great. And of course, Showtime bought it right away and ran it forever. And mm -hmm. One, I think it's having the confidence in doing something. And I didn't know how it was going to turn out. It was going to be the best that it could be for that time. Mm -hmm. And I think the more you do things, I mean, being just an actor, it's such a waiting game. And nowadays, more so than say, you know, 10, 15 years ago, there's so much you can do. Like, I don't have the talent, but I could create my own little web series. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a screenwriter, I, I just, you know, that's not my thing, but there's so much you can do. And I really loved giving women who don't have a, a choice, a lot of times because they're dead, um, a voice. Um, so that's how I really found like, okay, so this, this is what I'm going to focus on. And now I'm focusing on, I've, I've started a, a writing mentorship program. Um, it will just be online in the beginning, but I did have this three day, you know, uh, big event with other writers to help mentor um, girls and young women to really find their voice, whether it comes out through poetry, through song, through writing, because I, I think we're not taught how, what is our voice? Mm. You know, I would be at a lot of parties and nobody ever asked, oh, what do you do? 
And it's like, oh, hi, nice, nice dress. You know, and, and really find that, that you can speak up and what you have to say is valuable, even if nobody else cares. Yeah. You know, it's, it's you're speaking your voice. And that's what I wanted to do for for all, you know, the women that I'm writing about or, or mm -hmm. directing. You know, yeah. and, that, and then that motivates me. And also, I have three children. So if, if I'm going to go take my hours and hours and hours to do this work, I, I want to love it. Otherwise, I could just be with them. I mean, it's, you know, not fair to them. I agree. So I, I love think that. You have to be that kind of thing. If you, you know, you wake up at four in the morning, oh, thinking about this, thinking about this, and just, you know, so you're obsessed about whatever it is. Yeah. No, I agree. I totally agree with that. When you have children, you have to reassess, reassess things and really it has to make, make sense about well, why, why are you doing this? Why are you waking up? You know, being an actress, I mean, you see so many stories out there today, especially today's world about being an actress. It can be very painful. There are lots of experiences people experience, but you know, challenges as well that it comes with. What are some of your painful and most joyful memories that you could share? Um, oh God, I mean, you know, I can tell you a hundred million auditions where I was horrible and they would like, I could, I could see them laughing at me, but you just, I mean, now it doesn't affect me at all. I mean, but also they were kind of mean and set you up. It was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's just, I, again, I think the most painful is just, it's the waiting and it's like, why isn't somebody hiring me? Why isn't, you know, why don't I have an audition? Why don't I do that? That's why you just absolutely have to find something else. And it can be in the same, you know, form of entertainment. I mean, you can find a friend and you can like, let's work this out. Let's figure this out. Let's film something. I mean, there's so many avenues, you know, it used to be, you know, if you filmed something that there was no place to put it, you know, so now at least you can, you can find a way to do it. And you can connect via social media with a lot of like minds. I mean, there's so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that way, the painful part of not getting something, not getting an audition mm -hmm. is, is less. Because you're like, oh, well, at least, you know, I'm doing this. Yeah. While you're still continuing, you know, studying or whatever. Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, you, you focus a lot on women now. You focus almost like yeah, you've, completely. Uh, you've moved a lot of a big chapter from what you're doing. A big chunk is helping women. What inspires you to help go go about helping women? I think because I mean I've had a, a lot of help in my life, but not kind of that I had to ask for. Yeah. So. And, and I think today, young girls really kind of are smart and savvy. And I just think any kind of help they can get, you know, because you do have to wade through a lot of stuff because there is a lot of opportunities. You just, you know, I feel like I know how to focus on certain things. That's why I'm, I'm doing this, this mentorship about stories and what is their story or can they write a story about their grandmother or you know, what, what are all of our stories? We have interesting stories to tell. And now that's really the time where, where we're being invited in that people want to hear those more. So it's really just, you know, helping with my experience and, you know, any, my time to help these girls thrive in any way I can or connect them to people I know or whatever it is. Yeah. Now, this brings me to my final question in terms of the um, pandemic. It's really killed creativity. And one of your sectors is the creativity side. You do documentaries, you do, you write books, you, you're an actress. And that has killed the opportunity for a lot of people in that sector that they, you know, they're stuck indoors because I know you've mentioned that they could do other things. But what would be your hope in ways of encouraging them to keep going you know because like i think you said it in back in the days it wasn't easy then we you didn't have much of the software we have today we don't have the platform but what would be your hope for these uh, you know i just think it's being really tough and like you know knows the grindstone and you know i'm sitting here every day writing the book i'm on my like 
intense draft. I hate it. I like today I posted a thing in my stories. It's like I resent writing today. <laughs> But you got to do it. You just got to do it. You know, and then there's stupid other little things like I have a little trampoline right here. Go jump on that for a minute. I mean, it really does make me feel like, oh, you know, I mean, I'm a type of person. I'm as social as I am. I could definitely sit inside a room forever. My favorite thing to do is edit, put in a little box and edit my films. I could do that 20 hours a day. So I'm a little more fortunate. I don't need, feel like the need to go hike up a mountain ever. Mm. Um, but I do think it's just, you you know, sometimes we're too soft on ourselves and I think you just gotta go, you know what? No, I don't, I don't feel like doing this, but I, here I am because this pandemic will end and what can we mm. see at the end of it? Well, it's like, okay, at least, at least I got that fun. And it was something that I wanted to do. Mm. You know, I mean, even if you, you're, you're searching watch a hundred movies during the day if you have the opportunity read a million books i mean no it's not fun i'd rather go out having cocktails with girlfriends but yes. you know it's just i just think it's really being tough and this is the reality mm, yeah i miss nothing we just have i mean there's no like yeah happy pill like oh well all you got to do is <laughs> no it's like Oh my God, it's like another lockdown. You're like, oh my God, are you kidding? Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. There's not much we could do about it. We just have to learn to live with this. And, and, and you know, do like what I'm trying to do right now, because I am so resentful of my writing. I had a really master teacher and he said, switch things up. Like if you drive to work this way, drive this way instead. So my morning routine, I get up, I have my coffee, I check my phone, I read. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, jump in the pool first. And, the, you know, just the little things, you take a shower at night, do it in the morning and see how that just the little things shake up your world. You're not just like going from this to this, to this, to this, especially when we are stuck inside and we do have a routine. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a routine of writing, but I don't have to at a certain time for me because I'm disciplined enough to do it mm -hmm. all the time and just shake things up a little mm. really um i think it also does something to your brain creatively so it's not just on auto drive yes yeah switch, switch things up a bit and let the brain yeah. up. and you know i put on i put on i don't always put on bottom <laughs> but i do put on my face every day because when i'm walking by i don't want to like look like how i feel <laughs> <laughs> you I always, know so it's like I'll pretend that I'm going someplace and I just feel grand. You know, meanwhile, I've still just got, you know, like a long t shirt on and no pants. My kids are like, Mom, put on pants. <laughs> you know, this is the only time I think we're going to get to enjoy this. So why not? Why not? Since we're not meeting people in person, we might as well just enjoy this process. But honestly, Leslie, it's been fa fantastic talking, talking to you about your journey, your experience, and you know, it's more, more so about your passion, how to find your passion in what you do. And you've really elaborated that. On a final thought, what would you describe as your purpose? How would you define purpose? Is bringing understanding to women in particular who were uh, stigmatized and marginalized and not just through the left. I mean, there's, there's so many yeah. uh, different labels that we put on people, women in particular. Yes. And just kind of chipping away at them, finding their real story. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much, Leslie. This is really amazing. I'm so glad you took the time out to speak to me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.